Hey everyone, Poindexter here. Today we begin our fifth mission in America Bomber, Evil Queen of the Skies. Our last mission had us bombing the Ford Willow Run plant in Michigan, which was a success. We took minor flak hits over the target, but did take a hit to a fuel tank, which caused it to leak. Fortunately, it wasn't severe enough to bring down our bomber, and we made it back home safely. We managed to shoot down two American fighters, though their overall presence during the mission was severely lacking. It is now the beginning of a new month, May 1947. Our target for today is General Motors in Detroit, Michigan, located in Zone 6, another long flight. Atlantic Pride is loaded with bombs, ammunition, and chaff, and we take off for another long flight to Michigan and our fifth mission. We enter Zone 1 and join with our fighter escort. We proceed to Zone 2 and our first encounter. And it's an 8. No contact. We move to Zone 3. And it's a 7. Two P-80s, which is no effect. We proceed to Zone 4, and our escort peel off and return home. We roll for an encounter, and it's a 2 for another no contact. We approach the American coastline in Zone 5 and roll for an encounter. And the Americans finally make an appearance on a 7. Two P-80s will be attacking. The first bandit approaches from the rear quarter from a low position. This pilot is trained. The second bandit approaches from head on, 12 o'clock level. This pilot is also trained. Our ventral and tail gunner will target the approach six bandit, while the nose guns and all top turret guns will target the approach one bandit. Kranz and Lorenz fire at the trailing bandit, and both gunners miss. Our remaining gunners target the head-on bandit and fire. An Eichel in the front turret manages to hit the P-80, which damages the fighter. The rear P-80 moves to long range and fires, and hits on a 4. We roll a 1d6 for the P-80 for the number of hits scored, and the P-80 scores 5 hits. The first hit is 52, the airframe. The second hit is 41, electronics. And an 8 knocks out the radio. This will severely affect the dice roll if we have to bail out over water, since we can make no mayday call. The third hit is 24, the tail, which only causes minor damage. The fourth hit is 43, another hit to the airframe. And the final hit is 42, the port wing, which strikes the flaps. The damaged P-80 moves to long range and fires, and misses on a 2. With that, the stricken P-80 peels off and flies away. Kranz and Lorenz settle in their turrets and fire at the tailing P-80. And both gunners miss again. The bandit moves to medium range and fires. And strikes the bomber on a roll of four, which causes five more hits. The first hit is 34, the nose, which damages the windshield. The second hit is 52, the airframe. The third hit is 33, another airframe hit. The fourth strike is yet another hit to the airframe. The final hit is to the bomb bay, and the bombs are struck. But we have one more roll to see if the bombs have been detonated. A roll of six will cause the bombs to explode. And it's a six. At 
Atlantic Pride explodes in the air, and her entire crew are killed. With that, our short bombing career comes to an end. Our final bomb total was 200%, which gives us a marginal victory. If you are fairly new to war games, or solo games in general, then I would recommend America Bomber as a great starting point. The rules are not complicated, the game plays fairly quick, and it creates a fun narrative, like all great solo games do. Greg Smith has hit on a winning design, and he does a great job of capturing your imagination as you proceed through a campaign. I hope you've enjoyed my playthrough of the game, short as it was, and that it gives you a good idea of the gameplay and type of game this is. If you're a hardcore solo gamer, then America Bomber is heartily recommended. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk again soon.